Hello everyone and welcome back for episode 2 of Dyson Rush, where I try to essentially build the smallest Dyson Sphere possible in the shortest amount of time possible. Not quite a proper speedrun, but still. So last time I got blue cubes and a few little things started. Obviously I still need a bunch of research. The objective for today is gonna be to make red cubes. That said, um, obviously we can't get to red cubes without, well, for one, expanding our power grid, making steel for the refineries and the extractors, and I'm gonna want to work on production lines to automate all of the basic buildings, or at least most of the basic buildings. Um, we're not gonna fully automate some of them, for example, we're not gonna include stone and stuff like that, but we're gonna put down chests and stuff and move the materials ourselves. Or at least move part of the materials ourselves. Anyway, at this point, I just loaded back into the game, I need to find my bearings, craft some basic materials or buildings, and yeah, I'll cut back to when I'm building the next setup. So I'm going to start off by building a coal power plant. Now, why coal? Well, in two playthroughs, I've never had problems with coal, basically. It's that simple. It's going to be more compact. I don't want to be putting wind turbines everywhere, especially before I have access to a steady supply of foundations and soil. Besides, I've got just a bunch of coal tucked up in here, away from everything else, which is just super convenient. So I'm going to be using it. Now, I want to get started on automating all of the basic buildings, but I'm also going to be juggling a couple of things, namely processing the coal into graphite because it is a better fuel for our mech, and also expanding blue cubes production. Now, this is a little dumb in hindsight because I'm definitely slower than the speedrun, the world record speedrun for getting to the mission accomplished tech, and that means that because I'm behind, I'm taking more time. And more time means more time producing blue cubes, which means I could technically actually scale back, but I get distracted. The labs aren't using all of the circuits and magnets, so I decide to just expand it because I can. In hindsight, it's not ideal. If you're gonna attempt something like this, you should pace yourself, basically. The slower you go, the smaller your lines can be because you'll have more time to accumulate stuff. Then again, it's a balance, right? If you go too small, then you're going to run out of stuff sooner and you'll have to go back to expanding lines faster. So it's a balance, right? But if you go overkill, then you have too much stuff. It's kind of wasteful and the time you're spending making overkill, you are not making other production lines that will accumulate over time. So, give and take. Now, speaking of pacing yourself and balancing things, I get started on the iron for the next production lines, but I decide to go ahead and make a small steel setup first so it accumulates while I do everything else. And the nice thing about this is that iron plates take one second to process, and you need three iron plates per piece of steel, but steel takes three seconds to process, so it's one per second. So you can just feed one smelter of iron plates into one smelter of steel, and it'll work out perfectly. So this is what I get going right here. And now I finally get around to starting to set up the iron processing for automating everything and you'll notice that I'm gonna do something funky or fancy with the belts and that's because it's one of my favorite tips for the early to mid game and that is to have both the inputs and outputs for your production lines on the same side. That way that leaves the other side free to expand your lines later on provided you of course don't build a different line right behind your, your first one but I find it very helpful. It's very, it's very nice. And 
using that you can later upgrade to using the logistic stations and having you know a couple of inputs back into an output and just feeding it to the same station it's very nice very compact very neat and it allows for easy expansion which is the big deal Now, power is a little tight again, I'm a little worried, so I'm going to expand the coal power plant. It's a little bit claustrophobic, gotta admit, because I don't have access to foundations quite yet, or at least I don't have a supply of them. But I'll find a way, I'll make it work. So now I'm pretty happy with the power, but I noticed that I'm kind of stuck for research, and that's what I was talking about earlier, right? I'm running out of stuff to do with blue cubes, now I've got this manual research I gotta do, or want to do anyway, and I haven't automated those components. So, you know, I'm gonna handcraft them because I can and I'm not doing anything with the replicator at the moment, which, you know, you should be using. But yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier with getting ahead of yourself. I scaled up blue cube production, but I don't really have a use for it. I'm gonna get basically all of the blue science done uh, before automating all the things and yeah, I guess my blue cube production probably going to be idle for a little bit. Uh, but eh, better be ahead than behind, I guess, right? And finally, it's time to make what a lot of people call a mall, just a production line that's making a lot of things you're going to be using uh, for maximum convenience. And so I do that now. It's a bit late, but better late than never. I'm gonna speed up the footage. It's not particularly complicated, really. And for whatever is not on the three lines, uh, what's not in magnet, copper, or iron plates, I'm just gonna have an extra chest feeding the assemblers, and then I feed it, I feed the product back into the same chest. And you know, voila, job's done. At this point, I realized that I've got a lot of stone and steel building up that I'm not using, so I decided to take a quick break from the mall to set up something very quick and dirty to make foundations, because I foresee having to use a lot of foundations to make some bigger production lines soon, aka the red cubes. So unfortunately, you can't just put the different color cubes in different labs when you're doing research. So I'm going to dismantle the research side of things over here because it's a little claustrophobic. And I'm just going to put the cubes in storage. And then I'm going to move them manually to wherever I'm going to have my red cube production uh, in the near future. At least until I get to the yellow cubes and I get logistic stations to automate this process. But for now, it's just going to be a bit more convenient just because there isn't uh, enough room over here. And I also want to be accumulating blue cubes while I'm not researching anything so I can kind of kickstart the uh, research as soon as I get the red cubes. And now it's finally time to get started on oil production to be able to make the red cubes. Now, I'm not planning on moving straight to x-ray cracking or to use x-ray cracking even in the near future at all. For a few reasons. One, it's not even going to make the right ratio of graphite to hydrogen anyway. And the other reason is simply that I'm going to need the refined oil soon enough. And very conveniently, I've got this nice patch of coal right next to my oil, so I'm just going to turn that into graphite to make the red cubes and use the hydrogen. And then just store the oil temporarily until, you know, I'm ready to move on. Now, let me explain a little bit uh, this refinery setup. Basically, I'm planning on having a oil line in the middle. And because the refineries output a little bit more than they use, I'm going to use two belts, one on each side, to take the outputs. And then I'm going to use splitters to uh, separate the oil from the hydrogen. Now, you could do this differently. If you've watched my hydrogen tutorial, you're going to notice that I use vertical, if you will, refineries. 
and then I have the oil on one belt and the hydrogen on another belt. In hindsight, maybe I should have done that. It makes the belt spaghetti just a little bit more convenient, but it's also very, makes a very tall setup and it makes it awkward to find a room to place your power poles to power the refineries. So, you know, uh, personal preference here, but that's the way I opted to go this time. Just experimenting, you know? All right, ladies and gentlemen, the new research setup is finally complete. I just need to grab a thick pile of blue cubes to get it going, and we are off into the red cube research land. Now, I'm still a bit over an hour behind my reference speedrun, which, you know, I'm going to link in the description if you're into that kind of thing. But that's going to be it for this episode for me. Hopefully, I can get to the, the yellow cubes, yes, uh, in the next hour, hour and a half, or something like that. And then everything's going to take off from there. It's going to be much easier. But anyway, that's it for today. So please do all of the YouTube things if you enjoyed, or if you want to see more of this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.